The question, what are magic mushrooms, is incredibly pertinent to everyone alive today. From artists and priests to scientists and politicians, all of us need to learn a little bit more about our fungal friends, because they're definitely not going away. Welcome to Cheshire Corners. I'm Sebastian Coco, and I'll be your host as we trip through the looking glass. Thanks for coming back to the What Is series, where we take a more focused look at a specific psychedelic substance every episode. We're starting off with the most accessible psychedelic around today, and likely the one that's been used by humans for the longest time, magic mushrooms. Make sure to check out our videos, What Are Psychedelics? and The Brief History of Psychedelics for more context, as we're building on some of the basic information established there. Now, without further ado, what are magic mushrooms? Let's get into it. Before we talk about the magic in the mushrooms, we should probably talk more about the mushrooms themselves. The study of mushrooms is called mycology, and mycologists define a mushroom as a macrofungus with a distinctive fruiting body, which may either fruit above or below ground. Mushrooms can take many shapes and sizes, from blobbish masses to delicate webs, but the stereotypical mushroom you're probably familiar with is a fruiting body made up of a gilled cap attached to a stem. Relatively recent biodiversity studies utilizing the same definition of mushroom, classifying a macrofungus as any easily observed spore-bearing body, support that there are somewhere between 53 and 110,000 distinct species of mushroom around the world. Now, remember, mushrooms are fruiting bodies, meaning that they are an externalized vegetative growth meant to aid an underlying fungal organism in reproduction. Mycologists call the underlying vegetative body mycelium, and it acts as the root system for the larger fungal organism. Think of a body of mycelium as an apple tree, roots and all, and the mushrooms it produces are like the individual apples growing on that tree. Biologists would call both the mushrooms and the apples fruiting bodies. Let's be clear, this doesn't mean that all fruiting bodies act equally within an ecosystem. The way that an apple primes its seed for growth functions very differently than the way that a mushroom primes its spores for growth. Hence why there are plenty of incredibly poisonous mushrooms in the real world, but poisonous apples are really only common on Disney+. Looking through the same lens, the spores that a mushroom produces can be thought of like the seeds in those apples, and it's generally accepted that the larger vegetative body, the mycelium in the tree, produces smaller fruiting bodies, the mushrooms and the apples, in order to spread its genetic code throughout spores and seeds as widely as possible for reproduction. Now, there is a lot we can get into regarding the ecological function of mushrooms and how specifically they reproduce, but that's a video for another day. Definitely let us know if you want more content that covers the ecology and biology surrounding psychedelics. All things considered, that's a pretty good overview on the mushroom part. Now, let's get to the magic. Let's cover the obvious first. The magic in magic mushrooms comes from psychedelic chemicals, also called alkaloids, that are naturally occurring in these mushrooms. Make sure to check out the brief history of psychedelics for more on why mushrooms even evolved to produce these chemicals in the first place, but the short answer is that scientists are still unsure and are still coming up with new theories every day. There is actually a wide field of study surrounding alkaloids, which are defined as a highly diverse group of chemicals produced through normal plant metabolic processes, and this class of chemicals has been used for over 3,000 years in potions, teas, and tinctures in different cultures around the world before being formally isolated and named by pharmaceutical sciences. There are a host of other alkaloids that these mushrooms make, and these likely do affect a magic mushroom trip in ways we don't yet understand, but the main chemical of interest is usually psilocybin and its metabolite, psilocin. Fun fact, psilocybin and psilocin only gained medical prominence after Albert Hoffman, the inventor of LSD, identified, structurally characterized, and synthesized these alkaloids in 1958. There are approximately 170 species of mushrooms across four different genera that have been firmly identified as psilocybin bearing, with the most famous group being the psilocybe genus that contains over 150 of these known species. Psilocybe has species that are found around the world, from Mexico to Thailand, and naturally thrive in wet climates where they can absorb nutrients from whatever they're growing on, whether that's dirt, decomposing logs, or sometimes even dung. <laughs> it's probably for this reason that these mushrooms seem especially plentiful in subtropical regions covered by large bodies of vegetation, like forests and jungles. There are other types of psychedelic alkaloids that mushrooms produce. 
namely muscimol, the active chemical in Amanita muscaria and the main psychoactive tool of the Siberian shamans. But this is usually considered separately from psilocybin, as muscimol is an inhibitory chemical that acts on GABA receptors in the brain. If you'll remember from our last episode of the series, What Are Psychedelics?, psilocybin operates on serotonin receptors, specifically 5-HT2A receptors, and this is a completely separate neurotransmitter system from the GABA circuits that muscimol affects. On this channel, whenever we're talking about magic mushrooms very generally, we're almost always talking about psilocybin-bearing mushrooms. If we ever talk about muscimol-bearing mushrooms, we will very specifically reference Amanita muscaria, also known as the fly agaric, or any other mushrooms that might produce this chemical. But let's get back to psilocybin. What is it, how do mushrooms produce it, and how do humans process it into a psychedelic experience? Let's break it down from a bare-bones organic chemistry perspective first. The psilocybin molecule has actually been shown to be very structurally similar to serotonin. It is made up of a phosphate group and an amine group attached to an indole, a very simple aromatic ring, and the most proper chemical name for the molecule is actually 0-phosphoryl-4-hydroxy-N-dimethyltryptamine. We're not going to dive too deep into the organic chemistry rabbit hole, as there could be entire classes devoted to understanding the chemical structure and effect of psilocybin, but definitely let us know in the comments if you guys want to see more content focused on the chemistry behind psychedelics. Now, for those of you who might not be intimately familiar with organic chemistry, a molecule of this complexity requires at least a few separate steps of synthesis in order to get to the final product that is psilocybin. So how do mushrooms synthesize this complex chemical naturally and effortlessly? We're just finding out in the past few years. Although the structure of psilocybin has been known since Hoffman's discoveries in 1958, the enzymatic process that mushrooms use to convert more basic organic molecules to psilocybin has been shrouded in mystery. Frick et al.'s 2017 experiment that identified four enzymes and a stepwise reaction observed in psilocybin species that naturally converts 4-hydroxy-L-tryptophan to psilocybin and recreated this process in an artificial one-pot reaction represents a landmark point in our knowledge of how mushrooms actually synthesize psilocybin. Again, this is some really advanced chemistry that requires a pretty extensive background of knowledge to properly cover. So please, please, please comment below if you want to see more content about the chemistry of psychedelics. Now that we have a basic understanding of what psilocybin is and how it's synthesized, let's look at how it's broken down into psilocin, the molecule that forms as psilocybin is metabolized. Psilocybin is metabolized by a dephosphorylation reaction that occurs in the intestinal mucus through alkaline phosphatase and nonspecific esterase, common digestive enzymes that remove the phosphate group from the central indole of psilocybin. Psilocin is really just dephosphorylated psilocybin. Both molecules move from the intestinal tract to the bloodstream and can cross the blood-brain barrier to act as agonists of serotonin 5-HT2A receptors. These are classic psychedelics per the set definition we established last time in What Are Psychedelics? And the trip produced by these molecules is generally understood to be a rush of serotonin that manipulates both external and internal perception. That's an overview on what magic mushrooms are, sure, but why do we care? Why bother making this video in the first place? We have evidence that humankind has been fascinated by the psychedelic power of these plants for thousands of years, as the oldest arguable depiction of magic mushrooms resides in the caves of northern Africa, and has been carbon dated to be approximately 10,000 years old. Magic mushroom use has been recorded in history and archaeology around the world, from Mexico to Siberia. Its ritual use is central to a wide variety of cultures, and its recreational use has been associated with many prominent modern cultural figures. From a more pragmatic perspective, many recent scientific studies have supported that psilocybin is an incredibly effective treatment for depression and anxiety, including extreme cases such as treatment-resistant depression and end-of-life anxiety. Here's just a couple studies that can only begin to cover the mountains of significant data that supports the therapeutic use of psychedelics, specifically the therapeutic use of psilocybin during mushrooms. Magic mushrooms are also currently being decriminalized throughout the U.S from Oregon to Washington, D.C., and the legalization of psilocybin is an incredibly hot-button issue for many state governments today. This decriminalization is allowing religious groups that rely on mushroom use to step out of the underground, but has also caused its fair amount of controversy as these groups clash with authorities over the federally illegal substance. 
The question, what are magic mushrooms, is incredibly pertinent to everyone alive today. From artists and priests to scientists and politicians, all of us need to learn a little bit more about our fungal friends, because they're definitely not going away. Thanks for watching. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe if you enjoyed. Don't get psyched out!